Further, you had a lot of statutory developments like the Merchandise Marks Act in 1862, which allowed traders to actually bring action on the basis of deceiving the owner of the mark. Subsequently, you had the Trademark Registration Act, which was passed in 1875. Uh, then you had the Trademark Act in 1905, which provided for registration of marks based on the intent to use. This was the first time you would allow for registration of trademark based on the intent to use. It allowed for applications to be filed and introduced a system of examination of the marks. Right? Now we conclude the origins of trademark and begin the origins of patent law. Right? Early monopolies uh, uh, related to patents could be found in uh, 500 BC, wherein the Greek monarchs would actually grant a couple of years of monopoly for making new dishes. Then you had a system of guilds that came into play in the Roman Empire, and these guilds were actually granted a certain amount of monopoly. Subsequently, as the guilds started to grow and trade started to increase, you had a system of apprenticeship model where the guilds would actually recruit someone, teach them about a particular craft, provided that the person who was trained, who was trained actually remains within the guild. Um, you had the Venetian glass makers who followed this model and largely were able to come up with quality products. As reputation increased, the guild brought in a number of rules and restricted the members from disclosing the art to others, largely because you didn't have a system of protection, protecting the technology as such. So early monopolies, as you could see, were not necessarily meant to protect individual innovations. Largely, it was meant to kind of protect communal properties like that of the guilds. Right? The genesis of the patent system can actually be found in Florence and Venice. Uh, it is ambiguous whether Florence or whether Venice granted the first patent, but records kind of demonstrate that a boat maker who had come up with a vessel that could actually haul heavy material over the waters was granted a monopoly for three years in the municipal city of Florence. Right? Subsequently, Venice came up with a patent statute in 1474, which was largely meant to encourage talented individuals to come up with new inventions. The statute basically envisaged a system of registration on the basis of novelty. Infringers were actually made to pay a fine to the inventor. The other kind of development that happened alongside uh, developments in Italy was basically the developments in England. Now, in England, there was a practice of granting royal charters and letters patent. These letters patent basically were open directives given by the kings, declaring that a particular person has been authorized to have a monopoly over a particular product, and no individual in the society can interfere with such monopoly. Right? These earliest letter of patents could actually be traced to 12th century AD. Gradually, monopolies were granted to guilds who had exclusive rights to sell their products with a particular region. But subsequently, as the trade increased, individual monopolies were being granted. And uh, after the letters patent, you had a system of the monarchs actually coming up with what is known as privileges. These privileges were basically short of monopolies that were granted to individuals who introduced new technologies in the country. With the increase in competition from continental Europe, it became necessary to allow foreign artisans to practice their art in England. Artisans were granted privileges wherein they could practice their art for a particular duration. But they were required to train locals in that duration through the apprenticeship model. So you could have a person of foreign origin coming into England who would be granted a certain monopoly for a certain period of time over a particular product and that foreign person would train the locals during the period of monopoly. Numerous letter patents were issued largely to ensure that England could compete 
with the continental neighbors so that it could actually increase the revenues through taxes. Then you had a period wherein Queen Elizabeth started granting these letters, patents and monopolies uh, in huge numbers. Largely this was because of the fact that the monarchy did not have a lot of money and one way they could actually keep the nobility uh, uh, faithful to them was to kind of grant these monopolies. Some of these monopolies would actually be granted over stuff that is already in existence. For instance, monopolies were actually granted to making of playing cards, to making of salt, etc. All these practices were already in existence. People knew how to go about it. But these monopolies or privileges were granted by Queen Elizabeth largely to keep her nobility happy. Right? Um, but with the abuse of uh, these monopolies being uh, but with so many monopolies being granted uh, within a short span of time by Queen Elizabeth, it basically resulted in artificial increase in, in the price of goods, which actually led to a lot of people being discontented. This largely kind of resulted in a very well-known case called Darcy versus Allen. Uh, this was a case wherein Queen Elizabeth had actually granted monopoly over card making and selling of playing cards to Darcy for a period of 12 years, which was further extended. This basically meant others who were already involved in making playing cards could no longer make the playing cards. Right? So Darcy actually brought a couple of actions before, before the court saying that there were several card makers who were actually kind of infringing on his monopoly rights as such. Um, but when these matters actually came up before the court, uh, there were arguments made uh, by defendants wherein they said these monopolies were basically restricting um, innovation and more specifically a number of these monopolies were granted to things that already existed. As a result of this, it would basically mean that it would, the monopoly would increase, uh, increase the prices because there would be no alternative player in the market or competitor in the market. And as such, it was detrimental to the public. But Darcy argued that these monopolies were common law rights and it should be continued as such. Um, but the decision in Darcy versus Allen uh, is not material for the purposes of our discussion. What it did was basically set the base for what is today called, uh, what, what was then called as the statute of monopolies. When Queen Elizabeth uh, gave way to King James, a lot of complaints came to King James who kind of very clearly mentioned uh, that he was also perturbed by the fact that there were a lot of monopolies actually being granted. Some of them were really, really perturbing. As a result of this, the statute of monopolies was subsequently uh, formulated by the parliament in 1624 and the monopolies were largely to be granted on the basis of novelty and for a period of 14 years. This was basically the genesis of the modern patent law as such. Subsequently, after a 150 year period, it was also kind of required uh, that any inventor who wanted to claim a monopoly had to kind of specifically file for a specification that included a written description as such. So with that, we conclude the genesis of the patent system as such. To conclude, we'd, I'd say the, we have kind of discussed the origins of copyright, the origins of trademark, the origins of patent law as such and we have kind of seen the developments from the early days to the middle ages where largely property rights and intangible works started to take shape. Thank you very much.